So uh, joining me this afternoon is Simon Marshall, uh, the Chief Exec and Founder of TBD Marketing. Uh, Simon is going to talk to us today about all things LinkedIn. Um, he's an absolute proper data genius, so he is well worth listening, uh, well worth listening in. Um, before we kick off, Simon, um, what I thought might be quite interesting, um, we were talking earlier, There's you were saying to us there's over 675 million uh, LinkedIn uh, users. Um, back in March, about 3 million, 3 million of them were posting and sharing content regularly. Um, over the lockdown, that is increased by over 40%. We've now got something like 275 million uh, people regularly creating and sharing content on LinkedIn, which is just phenomenal. Um, wh why do you think, wh why, why, why has it exploded in this way? It's such a good question. I think um, people need an outlet for um, the kind of social element of doing business. And, you know, when, you, when you're working from home, as many of us in the B2B world have been for the last few months, uh, we've been using social media as a proxy for having those conversations that we might have, you know, on the phone or even um, on video conference or in the office as well. And I think that um, people have been very wary to make sure that they market themselves, uh, make themselves, um, you know, frankly, look as good as they can. Uh, and a lot of people are probably worried about losing their jobs as well. I want to make sure they're front of mind uh, <laughs> if any opportunities come up. So, yeah, usage has gone up and people hate isolation, I think. Uh, yep, absolutely right there. <laughs> Fed up with isolation and probably facing a few more months of it. Um, what would be quite interesting, you must have seen some changes to the kind of content, the type of content people are sharing. Um, it can't be the same kind of posts, the, the press releases and the articles that we were seeing before. So how, how has it changed? What have you seen that, um, that you like and, uh, um, and what's working well? Well, there's definitely a split uh, amongst the kind of accounts that we review. We produce a, a monthly report of law firm leaders from the top 100 law firms. And so we choose a managing partner and a senior partner from each of those firms. 70% of those leaders haven't shared anything for quite a while. So mm. the remaining 30% are taking all of the spoils. Now, some of those guys weren't doing a great deal, Matt, back in March, April. Um, they were leading through internal comms. They were leading through uh, the kind of regular outlets you might expect them to. Some people have really emerged as online leaders over the last few months. You know, you might highlight um, Sarah Walker-Smith from Shakespeare Martineau, Ed Whittington, who's performed a merger uh, for more Barlow under lockdown. Amazing achievement, really. Uh, Alice Stevenson from Stevenson Law. Those three individuals have got more likes, shares and comments on LinkedIn than, well, frankly, me. Um, they <laughs> and I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn, you know, and you, you yeah. Uh, they, what are they doing? Less traditional forms of communication. Ed is such a great example. If you've, got a, if you've got to bring two firms together and create a new collective culture, I feel as though he's been doing that, you know, on the power of his own kind of life and willingness to share what's going on. I think um, I've seen his son drumming, I've seen a cat stuck up a tree. You know, it's phenomenal to see a law firm leader leading a top 100 UK law firm uh, being as vulnerable, as accessible as Sarah shares a lot of wisdom uh, on a regular basis, shares a lot of quotes, um, and she's quite good fun to follow if you're looking for inspiration. And uh, Alice, um, she's a bit of an iconoclast, really, looks at um, taking on some of the norms of the industry, really getting people to think about the things that we've just accepted far too long, and um, mm -hmm. what we do differently about them. That resonates, especially with a lot of female and younger lawyers. Is it um, is it about being just a little bit more human, um, do you think, Simon? Yeah, and look, we've got to be very clear that this is, it is about being more human, but the stuff we're talking about there that's got a lot of impressions, a lot of um, airtime, that's, that's, we know Matt has uh, old uh, comms and marketing hacks. It's a comms and marketing effort that those guys are putting in, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I can't tell you, because I don't have private access to their accounts, what they're doing to use it for business development purposes or what the purpose 
advice. But as far as their comms and marketing strategy is concerned, yeah, they 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 they're sharing posts that give a strong sense of their culture, how they want to um, how they want to set out their story as a firm. And what's quite interesting is the ways that firms can measure the impact that they are having um, and their leaders are having, their staff are having on LinkedIn. What are the things that the comms teams um, can measure and use to improve the way they use LinkedIn? It's such a good question. I mean, the first thing to do is to start out with some really easy metrics, like how many of your people are actually on LinkedIn and linked to the main account. Once you've got past those initial hurdles of health and hygiene and, you know, have we got 90 percent of our employees on LinkedIn? You can set your own targets there. That's that's just stage one, really. Then we're looking at regularly kind of participating each month. And I've seen a couple of reports from other agencies that they produce. Um, I think you can give them yourselves, just work out who's been online this month and, you know, whether or not they've shared a post, etc. There's a bit of work going on in those areas. Um, we actually analyse how, how far leaders' posts are travelling um, mm-hmm. throughout. And then we also do some um, uh, dashboards for firms as well to tell them how their partners um, might be measuring up against each other in terms of their kind of LinkedIn impressions. So it's quite useful uh, to gamify. You know what um, professional services guys are like. They love a bit of competition amongst themselves. Um, marketing yeah. teams really though don't don't just um, rest for the stats that LinkedIn gives you. Right. That that I mean, if if you want to know the difference, it's, it's about not looking at just purely your own performance you've got to know what's good in the market so you may have gone up in an area and down in another area and they might be both opposite results of when you think they do because you might have gone up and everyone else has gone up three times as much and you might have gone down and they might they might have gone down three times as much so you know you've got to have context to what you're doing um Mm. just one last thing on this and to your earlier point about content but it comes back to these stats as well all law firms have seen an uplift over the last few months, really. And that, why is that, Matt? Because Brexit, furlough, they're default topics where people are going to go mm. to law firms to look for the answers, right? So it's been a very law-friendly business environment for the last few months. And I think some firms have really stepped up and on social, on their web, have really taken advantage of it. And, and can you see this as a trend that is going to continue? Um, with the law firms, the accountancy firms doing extremely well on LinkedIn at the moment. Yeah, they've got a long way to go. Um, we they're probably, you know, on the second leg of a four four by one hundred relay race. Um, mm-hmm. Most firms still probably nascent in terms of how they're measuring things. Um, if I were the managing partner of a firm at the moment, I'd want to know is all this time we're investing in the training for LinkedIn that we're spending on LinkedIn that we're spending on sales navigators it worth doing and I I think you need to have a benchmark the other thing I'd say if if you're a managing partner you need to be demonstrating that you're willing to do it as well (laughs) you know you can't ask all your people you know to be out there and then not be willing it's not like PR Matt you know where it's perfectly acceptable for a managing partner to go out there on behalf of the firm and do it all on this I think they'd expect a managing partner to do that. But on LinkedIn, you've got to go and do it and show everyone else that they're allowed to do it too. I couldn't agree more. So um, one final question um, for you. Um, Not everybody is a a creator, a content creator. Not everybody is comfortable writing and putting their thoughts down on paper. Um, How how can we, um, how can those guys get involved in LinkedIn in a meaningful way? Is there um, more than just sharing content or commenting on content? And and out of those two, what are the best things to do? That's such a good question. I I have a sense that um, everybody anticipates that it's the person who's creating original content that's doing the most successful job on LinkedIn. I think they're doing the most successful comms and marketing job, but the most successful business development job will be through commenting. OK, mm-hmm. now I've written a post previously. Go back and have a look on my LinkedIn account. You can read it or I will share it with this video afterwards. It's about sharing. Sharing is worth nothing. They might as well get rid of the button. Sharing doesn't share your post with many people. And do you know why that is? Because LinkedIn knows that people don't read shared posts. 
right? It's, it's, a, it's the Pavlovian response, a bit like liking. You know, it's very easy, minimal input, minimal output. Now, the thing you're asking me though is, what can people do if they can't create original content instead? Well, you know, liking one of your clients or your targets or your colleagues' successes or posts is a great start. Commenting on it, validly commenting on it. Matt, you've done such a brilliant job with this video today. I loved hearing from Simon Marshall, you know, I'm expecting to see that comment, Matt, right? Then, then, yeah. then, then guess what? That, you know, LinkedIn loves that because it's the social element of social media. So I just encourage people to be brave. Just say, this looks great. Or I love what you've done with this. Or please, can I hear more about this? Or please, can we have another post telling me about this thing? The author will love you for having commented. Fantastic. So the so in short, create content. And if you can't create it, yeah. comment on content. Definitely. Simon, some really interesting stuff there. And always, always a pleasure having a chat with you. Simon Marshall, Managing Director of TBD Marketing. Check him out on LinkedIn. Thanks.